hello, it's April 21st. Joe with you. It's Thursday. Let's get into our market roundup as the markets just decided to give things back. Uh, real quick, guys, I'm going to give you my two cents. I got a couple of trades to look at, take responsibility for the outcome. You know the drill. Let's get into the market analysis as it appeared to be a pretty strong week, actually, up until today. It looked like the markets were trying to establish some sort of a pivot point, uh, maybe erase a little bit. Of um, or at least stop the pullback that it had after that pretty good rally um, we saw the end of March. So where do we finish out? Uh, the Dow down 1%, S&P 1.5, and the NASDAQ down 2. Very, very kind of staged. You know, everything's about a half percent off. Now, the NASDAQ had some uh, bad news with Netflix, but it had some really good news with Tesla, although Tesla gave up the majority of its gains today with the rest of the markets. It did finish uh, on the green side. So... I talked about the tale of three stories, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the diamonds. The stories remain, meaning you can see who's definitely the strongest with the, the uh, Dow, the s and kind of in no man's land, and the NASDAQ continues to be the biggest loser. We had the uh, mid-caps down about 2.25%. Oil, hang, oil bounced uh, 1.85% on the well, – that's, that's the futures price. Gold's actually flat, uh, slightly down at 0.11. So let's take a look at the overall – a technical side of things as it just completely erased this week. So Monday and Tuesday look pretty good. Good support just below the 440 mark. We've talked a lot about that. Here we are parked just below it. Now, volatility didn't shoot up in the air. There was nothing really bad. I do believe, you know, and it was it was a continuing sell-off, folks. So if you take a look at the market's intraday, there's a gap up this morning, and we took an absolute 45-degree angle line all the way down, constant selling all the way down, not not crazy selling, just constant selling all the way down to where we closed. We did close slightly above our lows, off our lows. You can see that in the candlestick. And we and we didn't, uh, you know, we traded up a little bit in the morning as well. But it does at a 15-minute candle chart, you'll see it looks like a 45-degree angle line just going straight down. It's significant. The 450 mark was actually touched, which we know is a resistance area right there at the 20-day uh, moving average. And we did close price action below the 50-day moving average and below the 440. Now, we've seen this before. We actually saw it on Monday. And we saw it on last Friday. So we do have one more trading day tomorrow. We're going to see where this goes. But right now, it's in a pretty interesting spot uh, considering what caused this. Let's take a look at the cues. Well, Powell came out and said he might have to be a little bit more aggressive, raising about 50 basis points in May versus the 25 that is expected. We did have some pretty good economic news. We had jobless claims remaining pretty low, about 184, pretty much in line with expected. And we did have show uh, some an expansion in some of the um, in the services, I believe that's what came out. And so it showed that we're still on track. Uh, the consumer is still out there spending money, and so. We've made mention that as long as the consumer can keep up with inflation, it should be okay. I do believe something's got to give down the road. I think that's what the Fed has seen. Once again, there's my opinion. Taking a look at the chart on the Qs, it's a little bit more ominous, isn't it? We are using the 50-day moving average, not the 20-day moving average's resistance below the 350 mark. And we're actually closing below that 340 area, which we saw these markets have its first bounce at the beginning of the year, the end of January. So a little bit more glass half full than the glass... Uh, or I should say glass half empty than the glass half full that we've seen in the Dow. Taking a look at the heat map, your outside liars here, Tesla earnings, uh, AT&T earnings, Verizon's going up in sympathy. Verizon, folks, is actually looking pretty decent, but I do believe they have earnings tomorrow, tomorrow morning or tomorrow night. Um, so outside of that, it's a general sell-off across the board. I took a look at all the bulls that we were looking at over the last couple of days, and they have big red candles as well. A couple did hang out there, and we'll take a look at those uh, real quick. But let's get... Uh, market outlook i have to score this based on you know our three our three our three inputs here below the 20 day below the 50 and the, the slope they're all red right so i went ahead and said you know what i'm just going to go ahead and give it a negative one why isn't it a negative two and why is my monthly outlook zero and i'll tell you flat out folks it's because we are we are still hanging on to this support level Right? Should we call that, uh, what's the new one? 438, 437 and a half, whatever we want to call it. We're, we're parked there for a reason. Now, tomorrow we can completely blow through that. And now, then I could move my monthly outlook to a negative one and my weekly to a negative two, and I could get a little bit more bearish. It's one day, it's one large candle. It wiped out the majority of the week's move. It put the cues into negative territory after having three decent up days in a row. But there was no panic behind it. 
there's still complacency. It was a lack of buying once again. These The VIX did climb a little bit, but nothing significant. So I have to just sit back and play it as this lazy. You know what? I'm cautious here. I'm not running out to look for any bulls definitely tomorrow, uh, but we'll see what tomorrow brings. So I'm just going to sit right at that negative one for uh, tomorrow. And the, at the monthly, I'm just going to stay to zero. Really tough markets this week. So potential trades, we've got some bulls, we've got some bears. These carried through from Monday and Tuesday and yesterday's class as well. What I liked was the IYR, this real estate trust. Uh, Corey made mention, I, I believe, on, geez, Tuesday. Was that Monday or Tuesday? And uh, it did break out yesterday. looked really nice. Good breakout above that 111 mark, 110 and a half. And it gapped up and it came down as well with the rest of the markets, but it's parked itself above that resistance. So I still like it as something sideways. It's holding in there. And that's going to be the theme of the next couple of slides as well. Here's AJG. This came from yesterday's class. Nice confirmation of a bull pullback. Beautiful shadow on that hammer candle on, uh, what'd you call it? That's Tuesday. Good confirmation yesterday. And then it's hanging in there. I mean, it did fall down all the way from its top there, but it did stay even above the previous day's close. So it's hanging in there. And here's the last one that's hanging in there. A little lower than where it op or closed yesterday, but a nice gap up yesterday from the previous day, but a really neat um, bullish engulfing candle there on Wednesday. We had a target here, 174 soft target, stronger target at 176, and I actually hit that in two days. So slow playing this, yeah, you're going to be in for the long haul, but it's behaving correctly. You know, if we can get this thing above that 176 level, it can stay there. It might look to uh, continue to go sideways or up. So vertical spread, doing pretty good. Diagonal spread would be nice as well. Something a little bit more obvious on the bear side, Twilio. This one was on the bear watch list for a little bit. It's almost there. I wouldn't be upset if anybody got into this the bear side today. It did confirm kind of below a little bit of a support it said over the last three days. But the main support's going to be down here at about that 123 level. Let's call it 124. So it might get that tomorrow. Keep an eye on that. Real quick, guys, as I'm going through these, I haven't checked earnings. I imagine they're going to be coming up in the next week, week or two. So uh, keep that in mind. Coinbase, beautiful confirmation of a breakdown. It tried to bounce three days ago like everything else did on Monday. Looked like it was going to retest that 160 mark yesterday, and it didn't even get there. Rolled right over. And nice increase in volume as this broke. So good confirmation. That this would be a beautiful one to be in now. If not, keep an eye on it. And hopefully it doesn't gap down. Hopefully it kind of floats itself down. Uh, for you to jump into it if you guys are looking to get into more bears. And then here's DigitalOcean. This one's not quite there. I like this. You can see, let's see if I get my pin out here, draw a straight line. I do like it. I think it's it's got potential right around this area. So you can see it's still not quite there. I wanted to see, I wanted to break what it, what it where, uh, where it had that engulfing candle at the end of February and that first pivot low middle of March. So what do we want to call that here? 44, 43. Be patient with this, but boy, if we get a rollover uh, tomorrow or follow suit with what happened today, we could easily see this kind of drop pushing towards that 40 level. All right, so what do we got? Well, not much. The markets move abruptly lower, and it was, I, I, it, why I say abruptly is because it's outside of what was going on for the week. We gapped up. I expected, hey, good follow through from the previous day. We had a good move on Tuesday. Wednesday didn't do much. Figured it would gap up, and we'd, we'd go where it was. The Dow actually looked really, really strong. But this 45-degree angle, this constant selling throughout the whole day was very interesting. And, and I got some stuff here. Uh, you can see the Dow still hold on to its week's gains. The S&P and the NASDAQ are struggling. The NASDAQ's actually negative for the week. The s and is barely holding on to anything. But the jobless claims were low. Leading indicators, that's what it was. Sorry, folks. I hope I called it the right thing the first time. But leading economic indicators still show expansion. So we're keeping up with the inflation as long as it as long as we're expanding along with the inflation, this this will be okay to stay up. But as soon as we start to contract, that inflation doesn't come down. Understand that once we stop shopping and traveling, inflation doesn't go down with us. It has to be manipulated. It has to be dealt with. So it's how quick the Fed can react to this or if they have already lost, missed it already. In fact, I've seen articles are. Um, just today, talking about the Fed dropped the ball and Darren's been touting it for weeks. So uh, whatever happens, a chicken or the egg, it doesn't matter. We could be looking uh, into that moving forward. So that could be why we're just got this the sell off. And it's that bottom bullet point there, at least in the economics. The Fed does need to be a little bit more aggressive uh, according to what they're seeing. And I think that might have set that 
sell-off for today. We'll see if that carries into Friday or into next week. Now, guys, earnings reports. We got ISRG, Snap, Verizon is tomorrow. Uh, ISRG and Snap are out right about now-ish. Uh, Verizon, American Express, Newmont, and, and Schlumberger are uh, on the docket for tomorrow. And then we got a whole bunch of stuff next week. So it's where you find it. Make sure you check earnings before you make any trade, guys, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk to you next time. Bye, everyone.